Welcome back, Random TV Reviews, your girl, Lynette. And it's your boy, Stan Lang. All right, y'all know what time it is. We have made it to part three of the three. reunion. Yes. And before we get into it, we want to say thank you, thank you, thank you for everybody that comes and tunes into our recaps every week. Yes. Y'all do not disappoint. We have great dialogue in the comments. Even when we quit the show and came back, y'all came right on back through and was like the originals are back because y'all already know like we were the ones that originally started doing this show then we got pissed off then we Maybe dropped not. it <laughs> then y'all kept trolling us and then we came back well the truth <laughs> is we left because of martel we yeah bs yeah but yeah, but, anyway. but we decided you know what at the end of the day youtube is business for us why are we gonna let somebody mess with our coin like that so we came back <laughs> <laughs> but also to the cast of this show, we thank y'all so much for just being as human as you are. Yeah. You all always come through. Y'all jump in our comments. Y'all jump in our DMs. Y'all tell us what we like, what y'all like, what we don't, what you don't like, what we said. And we always just have a good, honest dialogue with each other. We appreciate each and every one Indeed. of you all. So let's go ahead and get into the recap. Honestly, like I said... I felt like last week we only needed two yeah. parts of the reunion. And I stand by that after seeing yeah. the third one. But mm -hmm. there were some great things that came out of it. So we're going to hit it and we're going to get on well, to I, it. Well, I would say like part three, all the best stuff was at, at the commercial breaks. Hello. <laughs> Before this, breaks. Mm, yeah. <laughs> the behind the scenes. Yeah. All right. So piggybacking off of last week's episode where we st um, stopped with, the, with the Scots and the Whitlows pretty much going back and forth at each other, right? Because the Whitlows came on to this show with that I know it all attitude, like I know how to fix your life. And although I bucked up my life the last time and I'm on the track of doing success with this marriage, I can tell you how to not have your marriage derailed. We kind of picked up where we left off with that. And that's the thing. Carlos said last week that, you know, the audience has a hard time accepting mm -hmm. someone new into mm -hmm. the cast and that's not true we have a hard time accepting people that come in messy yeah. shady and know-it-alls exactly. and that's what the Whitlows did and I give it to Marceau Marceau <laughs> did not give zero bucks <laughs> no he was like no 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 what you're not going to do is try to tell me <clears throat> about how to fix my stuff when you haven't walked this out your own self right. so here is um what's the husband name Lou so he was saying that, okay, you know, we may not have walked out this thing, but, you know, we have parents and we have other people. We all have those yep. those examples that either we can glean from or we be like, mm -mm, I don't want my skit to, to be like that. But everybody has numbers. Right. Real fast. Exactly. <laughs> Um, that's one of the reasons I never wanted to get married because I saw numbers. Yeah. But they shouldn't have been married as long as they were. <laughs> for they, real. They should have stayed free, uh, friends with benefits. Oh, but, yeah, buck buddies. <laughs> because they should have never been married. So I get what Marshall was saying with that yeah, whole thing. And, and I say I get get uh, what uh, Wichita Caller was saying too that once you have been through something, because there's only two ways to get wisdom from the mistakes that you make and the mistakes of others. So you can learn from other people's mistakes. But, however, when you come to give that advice, you got to come humble, man. Yeah. And don't make people think that you got it all together because obviously you don't because you, you don't have multiple marriages. But you true when you said that, hey, I can let you know about pitfalls that I faced to prevent you from having it. But in Marceau style, if you come at me. You come you, at me wrong. You I'm come not at me you. wrong, you know, because I'm just going to flex my 15 years on you that we've been doing it for 15 years. And y'all would have been doing it for 11 bucks. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I get it. So, yeah, I do agree with what he said, but wrong delivery. Very much so. Wrong, wrong delivery. delivery. So, the men was excused from <clears throat> the stage, and they went on to the back of one now. And I thought it was kind of funny. Of even with them dispersing the way they did was a message within itself. That you got the Scott brothers that went into their, um, their dressing room together, and they're having dialogue with each other. Martel went into his room by himself for a little while. Then Lewis ended up joining Martel in the room. So it's almost like the Scots. Then you have Martel, Martel. and then you have Lou. So Lou was like, well, let me go ahead and join forces with Martel at the back real quick because them Scott brothers ain't feeling me right now. That was funny. <laughs> but anyway, so now we're talking about we have all the ladies on the stage, right? So we have the Tiffany and the Destiny thing. So let's talk about <laughs> how Carlos... Decided to ask them their questions. So, 
Destiny, do you think that Tiffany is messy? Yes. We all think that Tiffany is messy. The no. only person that doesn't think that Tiffany is messy is Tiffany. And sometimes male. <laughs> and I'm sitting here like, and Tiffany is just flabbergasted that anyone could think that she is a messy person. And I'm like, so you didn't watch the show. Right. Like, even in that moment, you didn't feel like you were being messy. Did you watch the show? Exactly. Because the way it played mm -hmm. out, there is no way, even if that wasn't your intent, there was no way that you can't see or feel why anybody thinks that you are a messy person. I, I don't get it. So, you got things like, oh, you looking at me real hard. <laughs> oh, I, I'm just going to say, I hope that Carlos them honor, because we see that they got another season that's coming, <sighs> season <laughs> is coming. And uh, a lot of, like Carlos said, a lot of people were saying they want them to be fired. Now I don't want nobody to lose a job. I I I, 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 I have yeah I, yeah I don't. That's not in my heart to say that. But however, if they can't become transparent on the show, why did that? And happen? yeah, why even be there? So with that case, I would like find them a different position. But I say yeah. the same thing about yeah. Destiny. Destiny isn't bringing us anything either. Right. But at the same time, she's not on here being messy as well. So right. I don't have a problem with somebody just being a part of the cast. If they're just good for good commentary here and there, they're like just a neutral force. But you or got, be transparent. Right. If if you're gonna if you wanna <laughs> if you wanna look on the look in everybody else's closet, open yours up so we can see in there too. Hello, or turn the light on. Yeah. <laughs> so we need to be able to see. So then Mel introduct um interjects and then she was like, basically in so many words, she doesn't understand why Tiffany <laughs> And Destiny don't get along. Like, she doesn't understand why after all of this is still bad blood. And I'm like, yeah, Mel, what the heck? So then, to in Tiffany's defense, she was asking Destiny, she was like, so why all this attitude? Because I thought that we were kind of past it. Like, we, we got off on the wrong foot. I apologize. We went out had drinks, we kind of squashed it, and we kind of starting over from a new. So why are, why the attitude and the rolling of the eyes right now? And I get that because at the same time, but Tiffany, you have to understand that although in your real time, y'all are building and, and doing what y'all are doing, this is now a rehash. Yeah. So now Destiny is sitting in the, in the past right now. So all of her emotions and attitudes are probably being attached right back to that situation. And she's looking at you as if the situation is the situation right now. So you got to, it's it's weird because you gotta have to you gotta have to like kind of divide right. your emotions between what's real right now and, and what, what was real, real back then or what we're talking about. Right. So I get what she was saying, but Tiffany, you gonna have to you gonna have to learn to learn that time in two because like like the cast always says, we can get over things, but by the time the reunion comes back, you yeah, can go right back, back into that it. emotional yeah. space. I mean, shoot, just think about it when, when you're around somebody and they bring up a situation that happened like 10 years ago. Those same emotions can well up, especially especially if it was something real sensitive. And that was sensitive yeah. for Destiny. Mm -hmm. Destiny is in a really sensitive spot right now. Mm -hmm. She had just gotten divorced. Yeah. No, no one knew. Then you're bringing her some mess about her husband. Mm -hmm. It was just too much. So then we get to talking to Destiny. And Carlos wanted to know how was her. Her and Mel's relationship. Well, come to find out that her and Mel hasn't spoken since they wrapped up. And I was like, It's like, wow. But it brought me back to way back when, when Mel, um, Kimmy, and Tisha used to always get into it, that they would be like, once things are not situational, we don't hear from you. Mel. Mm -hmm. But when things are going on in your life, you think that we're supposed to automatically pick up on what's going on with you and feel comfortable enough to be like, I'm here for you, but you haven't kept that space open for us to be able to dive in and be what you need us to be. But you're mad at us because we're not what you need us to be. So here's what Destiny was saying. Destiny was like, just we went. Oh boy, go ahead. Destiny said we've been. We went from talking every day, every other day <clears> to <throat> I'm calling and now I might get a test message back of a one, two, three, and then sometimes I don't. And Mel pretty much said, "Listen, when I wrap up from the show, I 
put my life into another perspective and I deal with other things. And like I said, it seems like Mel is a situational relationship person. Like she's friends. Her friendship with you is consistent as long as we have something situational on the table. Work, projects, things like that. And there's nothing wrong with that because we all have friendships like that. <clears throat> but at the same time, you have to let those friendships know that's what kind of friend you are. Mm -hmm. So that they don't become offended. That when I'm calling you, now you're not answering or right. you're not responding the way you were. Because it's almost like you feel like, did I do something? Right. Like, why you dropped me off at the corner and didn't come pick me up? Like, what, what what's the deal? It almost feels usurious. Yeah, and that's what they said on there. They was like, yeah, it almost kind of feel like that. But, you know, we only can, you know, get what the show said. But when you was talking, it made me think about the situation where uh, you said with this guy and this girl, they was in relationship. And something happened to her downstairs situation. And he had to put, like, cream on it for weeks at a time. What? And then the moment when her skit got together, she, she oh, left. Oh, yeah. And she left and went and cheated on him after he did all that for her. I forgot about that. Yeah, I thought about that. So, yeah, that's why I take it again. I think all of us do have have had friends where when their skit is against the wall, you ride or die with them. You, you dare to comfort them. Uh, meditate with them, <laughs> you know, get them a kind word, lift their spirit, and then the moment that they get right back on their feet, you don't hear from them no more. Yeah, yeah. So I, I'm not sure if Mel is like that, but that's how, like you said, that's how that's how they feel. But that's how it's I been about. two different. That, that's why I thought yeah. the situation. Yeah, yeah. He, he brought her 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 down situation back to life. <laughs> And, and so that she got right, she was bucking somebody else. I was like, don't, that's effed up. Yeah. That's effed up. <laughs> so Tisha interjects and she was like kind of rolling her eyes. And she was like, that's kind of the same thing that happened with <clears throat> me and Mel. And maybe Mel just doesn't know how to be a good friend. If someone else had said it, <laughs> we probably could <laughs> accept it a little better. Because Tisha does seem like she requires a lot out of her friendship. Yeah, Tisha's full. Yeah. And I'm glad she admitted she it. Admitted she it. admitted it. Yes, yeah. Yeah, but like Destiny was saying, she was like, I don't know where we are. And Mel was saying, you know, we're fine. Like, I'm not in a bad place with you. I just have other things that I'm dealing with. And that's fine. I just communicate that with that's the people. That's what I'm going to say, yeah, communicate that. That yeah. you are consistent with. Right. Like, I had a friend one time, no lie. And we fell out about this. And although we're still friends, it's one of those situations that you feel like kind of changed things permanently. My friend went on a fast. And just like Destiny and Mel, we spoke every day. Mm -hmm. To the point where we worked together too. Some days when we didn't feel like driving, we would just ride in the car with each other because we lived close enough to each other that we picked each other up, rode to work together, came back. And then all of a sudden, nothing. It's a ghost. Ghost. At work, the speaking would be like, hey, hey. And this went on for 60 days. And, I, and the, the number is specific because she went on a fast for 60 days. And she said the Lord told her to cut off everybody that she felt could distract her from whatever focus she was trying to get with God at that moment. <laughs> so you was a distraction. <laughs> And I said, I don't have a problem. As a person that that fasts a lot, as a person that meditates and connects with God, I don't have a problem with that. But the people that are expecting me to show up in their lives on a consistent basis, I have to let them know what's going on with me. Because then they'll start to think that something that is, is wrong. wrong with the relationship. Right. She didn't see it that way. I said, we went from <clears throat> talking one day to the next day, you not speaking. Mm -hmm. You at work acting funny, just like, hey... Like, like I got the plague or something. Like, I don't need something to you. And then after the 60 days, you want to call me and you want to go out to eat. Hold on. Fuck up. <laughs> what in the bipolar fasting is going on here? Right. <laughs> and it changed everything. Because at any moment now, I'm waiting for you to switch up on me. Yeah. That's what we don't need in a relationship. We need... Clear communication. And, yep, and like I said, you, it could all been avoided. All she had to do was say, "I'm, I'm going fast. fast for sixty days. You're not gonna hear from me." Yeah, and it wasn't that I was a distraction. Everything was a distraction, so she yeah. cut everybody off. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah, whatever. 
So let's get it on to talking about Kimmy and Tisha. Oh, Lord have mercy. I, I really do hope that they get their relationship back on track. Because it's family. Because it's family, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like every time that they talk about it, it like it getting worse. It's like it's the tension worse. gets worse and worse and worse. And yeah. But in real life, I think that they're they're okay. <clears throat> in real life, I think they're okay. It's just when they have to talk about it. It rehashes everything and it kind of but right, but puts a spotlight on where it was. But or it, is. that leads me right in saying, like, even with that, it's that that silent tension. So it's like I hope that they really hash it out and that it don't blow up at the wrong freaking time. Mm -hmm. And most of the time, that's with family at Thanksgiving. <laughs> you know, we got Christmas coming, and you know, you get a little bit of alcohol in your system. Oh and, lord! And truth start you coming out. It in <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you better that's be cute. careful who you pick up in grocery stores the next time. And then I feel, I feel sorry for Marso and um, Maurice being the brothers having to deal with their wives like that, and it's like. Uh, they want to build on a manor together. And, yeah, it's like, man. Yeah. But, um, so Kimmy's whole thing is this. Kimmy thinks, and I believe it too, that Tisha's whole thing with her is when she fell out with Mel, I was supposed to fall out with Mel. But here's the thing. Aren't we grown enough that you need to be able to trust me Right. that when I'm talking to someone that you're on the outs with, our conversations are not about you, boo. Exactly. They're not against you. And if this person tries to talk to me about you, do, don't you trust me enough that I know how to divide the line? Exactly. That I know how to cut it off when I feel like it's gone too far. That we're not going to go into this like that. That's Kimmy's whole thing. Listen, I'm grown. And I don't have the bandwidth to keep having to have my relationships around your feelings. Yeah. Or do everything you want me to do so that you feel comfortable with how I move. I don't have it to give because at the end of the day. That's control. It is control. Mm -hmm. And it's all about trust. Yeah. Do you trust me as one, your sister-in-law, or as your friend, period? Yeah. That any of my moves are not to hurt you. But I still think that's really high schoolish. When, it is. When you have to, if me and you mad at the same person and you mad at me. When I maintain a relationship with them, when they never did nothing to me, yeah, they never did nothing to me. So why, why should I, why should I have to cut them off because me and yeah. you are on out? No, they don't work. Well, you and that person is on Real out. Real facts. Yeah. <clears throat> so Kimmy said, "Listen, Tisha wants things Tisha's way, and Tisha's not gonna always get things Tisha's way." Real talk. And then Carlos had asked this question. Carlos is good for asking yeah, the right the questions. Right questions, y'all. <laughs> that if. You had met Tisha outside Ooh. of your relationship Ooh. with the Scots. Would you all be friends? And she said no. Nope. She said Tisha is too much. She said she is too much. Kimmy I, is me. I get it. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. Now, there are always going to be relationships and situations that you <clears> have <throat> to deal with because it's just intertwined with it's just woven into your other relationships. Right. But if I had a choice, mm -hmm. it probably wouldn't be the way that it is because I don't choose, I, I choose very easygoing friendships. Right. And the moment yeah. my friendships cause me more questions than anything, I am good for being like, see you. I see you. When I see you, because oh, I don't have it to give. Yeah, energy suckers. I it's don't, like I'm too old. Yeah, for after it. you finish dealing with them, you always like, drain. Uh, they You're always like, got something uh, going on. But at the same time, you know, you have you know instances within any relationship where it's like, uh, because you're putting the energy in to help them out. But if it's like constant, a constant, thing. constant, and constant and constant, yeah, it's a, it's enough to wear you out to the point where you're like, no, it's not. I, worth I it. don't want to be friends with you no more. And it's not personal. <clears throat> no, it's if not that's personal. the kind of person that you are, it is what it is. It goes and then Tisha can't even be mad about it because look at what you bring to the table into the intertwined and the woven relationship with you. You bring your mama who's mm, always, always got something going <laughs> yeah. on. So in Kimmy's defense, why would I choose all of that? Yeah. Real facts. Mm -hmm. Like you said last week, I choose my peace. I choose my motherfucking peace. Yeah. And if it comes with you, your mama, your cousin trying to check me 
at the at the cookout. I choose peace every time. Yep. I ain't got it to give. Don't have it to give at all. So, you know, of course, Tisha, she she not feeling none of that at all. She's really in her feelings. And it does hurt to kind of feel like I wouldn't be chosen. It does it does hurt. But it, it doesn't mean that you're less of, of a, a person, person or yeah. less of a friend. It just means that y'all... You, you wouldn't be a friend for you're her. You're not a good fit for her puzzle. Right. Because of the kind of person that she is. Some people love that kind of stuff. I don't. I can't yeah. do it. Like me and my best friend, been best friends since high school. She can deal with the kind of stuff that Tisha does all day long. And we have friends that she deals with, I can't deal with them. Mm. We ain't mad with each other. We ain't going to talk. You <laughs> deal with them. That's your friend. I love her too, but that's your friend. <laughs> can't do it. I, I don't have that kind of, I'm not made like that. My best friend is so patient. No. Yes, she you is. You gotta. Amanda, No. <laughs> Keep your friend over there. <laughs> so then we get a commercial break. Now this is where we started to really get into the nitty gritty. Yeah. And Kimmy and Tisha gets into it a little bit more. And the same thing that's been going on popped up again. When do you stand up for me? When do you not stand up for me? Finally, Kimmy had had enough and she was like, listen, when did you stand up uh, for, for me? For me, yeah. And she, Tisha she, couldn't give her the question. one. Yeah. And she was like, well, when you got married and this. No, no, no. We're talking about when the back's against the wall and it's time to take up for someone. Yeah, that when, situation. When did yeah, you do, do that? that? And mm -hmm. she didn't have an instance. And that was like, boom, bingo right there. Bingo right there. So then we get into it. Then Mel jumps up. I don't know if this was just edited weird. But all of a sudden, it was almost like Mel got up and got bowed about it, was trying to get in well, Tisha's face, face. Yeah. and was saying, you know, when y'all go on y'all lives and this and that, and we never said, I never said anything about you. I just talked about your marriage. And Tisha was like, you are talking about me. When you talk about my marriage, you're talking about, yes, you are really. Right. I mean, we're we not going we're not gonna play on words here. You are talking about me and my marriage. I mean, real facts. My marriage is, is a thing, but you're talking about us in it. So I, I don't, I really, it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was like, what the hell? But um, Tisha wasn't backing down from Mel, and I did appreciate that. Um, another thing that um, Kimmy said, you know, you never check Wanda. Tisha said, I do check Wanda. She said, uh, way after, down the, the line. line, yeah, like after the damage is done, no. yeah. Then you come in and you check her, but after that. I'm done. I'm tired. I think the first time we saw her check her mama was when they was on their packed porch. Yes, on that and she, patio. And yeah. She, and, and Wanda came in there and started talking about them. Marceau. All, Marceau and all them women's. And she finally checked her at that point. Because she was like, you coming and you you messing up my household. And then you going on about your business and I got to deal with this foolishness. You drop off here. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I don't know. So then we get the mamas on the stage, right? So Martell's mom isn't there. She's doing grandmama duties. I wish she could have been on here. Me though. too. Because <laughs> she cared her. there is a lot that we can ask the mom, especially when she was not advocating for her um, son to go to therapy that he didn't need to go to no therapist. Mm -hmm. Like what? You 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 look at this show, don't you? Well, it's mama and the sons, though. It is. Yeah, man. <laughs> so um, Carlos <clears throat> asked. Um, what's her name? Van. Vanessa. Van. Yeah, I keep wanting to call Val. Um, was it hard to watch the dissolve of this marriage? Like you've been around them, you've seen how they were, they built this beautiful life and family, and then just to see it all go to skit, how did it make you feel? And you know, of course she was saying, you know, it was very hard for her to see her daughter go through that. And I was like a cheerleader for them to work it out, get get it back together. But then when I started to see my daughter to become happy again, mm -hmm. that's when I was like, okay, now I'm advocating for my daughter's happiness. So Mel began to cry and she was, you know, she explained that, she, you know, those are happy tears because yeah. she knows that at the end of the day, her mom only wants what makes her happy. And for her mom mm -hmm. to advocate for her being how it is now and being happy meant the world to her. It was almost like a like a stamp of approval that boom, 
you're doing what you need to do yeah. to make yourself happy. And I took it like what Miss Wanda was trying to do was telling them, which I know you're going to talk about it, that mm. her and Martell ought to stay together in spite of what's going on because y'all loves each other. <laughs> and that, you know, mm. I love y'all that generation, but that toxic thinking... Oh. That you have to stay together because you got kids and and love and years and ex- yeah and accept that toxicity like that. No, that that's that's why we have a bunch of us rocking around here. Ain't right and today. I don't want to get married. Right. And that was me. <laughs> so I think she was crying that fact that her mama didn't push her to stay in something toxic. Yeah, especially because yeah. her mom is like in church and stuff like that, and that's what they really do a lot. Um. So then. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> we're really not going to get into a lot of it because I thought they were going to deal with it more than they did but um, they started having the dialogue about the family and the family dynamic and whatever and basically Martel said that his kids be coming back and telling him and saying stuff about him that the mama had instilled in the mind we didn't really get into a whole well, lot of it, it yeah. because it exploded <laughs> into a situation where <laughs> we it they made it seem like at first Mel had rolled up on Martel and Arion and the baby at a restaurant, but it really wasn't like that. Martel, Arion, and the baby just happened to be at a restaurant, and Mel and her family was rolling up, and baby girl spotted her daddy with the new chick and went plum crazy, started right. hanging out the window. I said, "Baby girl, folks, <laughs> get off of my, my daddy! My daddy. <laughs> Who is that?" So, this all brought everything to light. Do your kids know about the new baby? He well, at this point, he, he still hadn't. So, that's what Mel was saying. So, if I'm such a bad person and I'm putting all this stuff in our kids' head, that would have been the first thing I would have told them. They didn't know. I was trying to get my children out of a situation where they rode in mistakenly seen their father in a whole nother family. Yeah. And their dad hasn't told them about it. So, you know, now he don't correct the death situation because he released um, photos of all the kids together in a family flo- photo on yesterday. I guess he said before part three air. Yeah, because I read that. that out. Yeah, because Carlos King was telling him that he needed to go ahead and do that real soon. Because yeah. you don't, because you on TV, you don't have a whole lot of time like other people do. But yeah, he should have been told him. Yeah. Because yeah. mm-hmm. how old? Oh, mm-hmm. The baby just celebrated one year old, right? The baby I just turned so. one. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. But anyway. So let's get on and talk about get into the Wanda and the van thing. So Wanda and Van <laughs> got into it. And basically, they want. <laughs> Van was saying, why in the world? Because, you know, they they rolled back the footage of when Wanda, like you said, was trying to tell them that they loved each other. They need to be with each other. They need to figure out a way to work it out. And Ms. Van was like, why should she listen to somebody you. like you? Like somebody that gets on social media acting all ghetto uh-huh. <laughs> and telling um side chicks that they need to make sure that they're getting the same as the wife and things like that. Why would she listen to somebody like you? Basically, someone... That advocates for the side chick and one that has a couple of husbands on the side yeah. of why, <laughs> yeah. why is it that you think you can tell my daughter anything? So then Miss Wanda said, well, why did, Why would she listen to you? you. Huh? <laughs> I don't did a better job with mine than you did with you. Said, matter of fact, you should have taught her how to make some of them sex tapes that you make. I was like, I wish somebody would bring this sex tape out. Would you watch it if it came out? Hell no. <laughs> Hell no, I ain't watching that. Mm-mm. That's like watching the missionary board and the deacon have sex. Why would I want to watch that? No. All right. <laughs> no. But I wish because it always keeps, it keeps coming, coming, coming up. up. Yeah. So then, then, me and Stanley, I, we both looked at each other and said, okay, somebody freaking lying Somebody here. lying. So then we got into the, so you were in a relationship with one of the Scott brothers, right, Miss Van? No, no, we were never good, in a relationship. We were really good, good, good friends. friends. I was like, so Martel said, hold on, wait. You was driving five hours, hours yeah. to go spend weekends and spending the night at his house. She said, I never spent the night at his house. We're not going to play on words. <laughs> did you spend the night out no, of town? No, did you drive five hours to get to him? That's we the ain't question. driving yeah. five hours for no friends. No. Nah. 
Somebody get bucked good. So, <laughs> then here go the Scott brothers. Maurice won't say much. But Marceau said, listen. Uh-huh. I ain't never seen no sex Sixteen. tape. I don't heard that there was. I don't heard things about <clears throat> it. I ain't never seen it. But there definitely was a relationship. Yes, it was a relationship. Miss Van ain't say nothing. Nope. I was like, why lie? Why lie? Because you single. You good and grown. You got no reason to lie. But that generation do that. Like, what's the what's the reason to lie? I mean, if you want if you want to get, you know, ride five hours to get the date, you can do that, right? Cause you saying up. Fuck them church people, they doing it too. Matter of fact, we, we got we got one across the street that, you know, every I don't weekend. know how far he got to come, but he beats over there dropping it off. Every weekend. Every weekend. With his duck bag. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> and that's literally what we call him dropping dick off. Yeah. Dropping dick off across the street. Yep. <laughs> On Sunday. Duffel bag go back in the trunk. Mm -hmm. He out of here. <laughs> and these is old white people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we ain't talking about it, y'all. So, hey, we man, okay? do your thing. You ain't got to hide. You ain't got to lie. Because the reason we looked at each other, because that T was dropped in our inbox. Yeah. Boom. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah. Long time. Like, three years ago. That I am such and such, such and such, such and such. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then when that came up, I was like, wait. Like, what? Oh, okay. Why, why lie, Craig? <laughs> I, I don't get it. I don't. And we've talked about this before, too. Like, um, when we were in church heavy, heavy. That that generation just don't admit stuff. Yeah. Like. You'll you have admit to the dirt. Yeah, like you'll have something that a whole family is offended by and won't nobody admit to it until the person died. And then be like, oh, Uncle John wants your uncle. He really was your sister's daddy, but we mm -hmm. couldn't say nothing because that one over there was going to get mad if yep. they knew. Why? Yep. And then you want a whole, <laughs> then you want a whole tribe of new saints to be honest and yeah. transparent. Yeah. But you don't lie your whole life and don't nobody know the truth until to the fume. And we got five more people walking in behind the family trying to figure yep. out who these people are. Yep. And you sitting out there with kids that your current kids don't even know about. Could be dating. Yeah. Because if you come from small towns, they all like this. Yep. But any hooters. Straight from the VA. Oh, uh, no. We, oh, we ain't done we yet. We ain't done oh, yet. Oh, I thought we were done. We pretty much are because oh. really we dragging this on way longer than it needs <laughs> to be. So um, then we get into um, Kimmy and Wanda. And why Wanda thinks that Kimmy is a snake. Oh. And Wanda said, listen, the reason that I believe that Kimmy is a snake is because when she was good friends with Tisha, her and Tisha was talking about Mel like a dog. So now that Kimmy is over there talking to Mel, I got a feeling that she's talking about Tisha to Mel like a dog. Let's, in all transparency, we're going to use that word tonight. Wanda does have a point. Because that's usually how it goes. But did you hear Kimmy tell Mel to her face on the last reunion? Y'all, we talked about you. Talked about you good. So you got somebody that don't sat there and told the person that, yep, we, when we were together, we talked about you. Why wouldn't you think that she would be that honest with your daughter that if they were talking about her yeah. together, that she wouldn't come right back and tell your daughter, yeah, me and Mel were talking about, about you too. too. Yep. We still talking about the same person here. Yeah. The rules usually don't change. The way they are in a situation with one is you know, usually the way they're in a situation with the other. Exactly. Boom. Now, we had never had that transparency from the last reunion. I might could have rocked with you a little bit on that one, Wanda. But Kimmy already outed herself about that one. Yup, show did. Yup. Show did. <laughs> and then I checked on Mel on the back porch. That didn't get put in the scene. But from this point on, you act like I ain't never had your back. Boom. We got it all out there. I don't know what else to do. I'm tired. Yeah. I'm weary. Like she said, she <laughs> said, I don't, I, I just, I don't have the capacity to give her what it is that she needs from me. My word is I don't have the bandwidth. <laughs> yeah, bandwidth. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't have, I don't have the bandwidth to deal with you. I tell my people I don't have the bandwidth to deal with you right now. 
<sighs> so then we get to the end and Jalen comes out with the chocolate in a bottle, sits over there by Destiny. They over there um, giving Kimmy a good little kiki about it because you know they like to get together and uh -huh. give Kimmy, Kimmy a little kiki. And pretty much Carlos let us know that they renew for another season. So we will see if these Whitlows come back next season. I, if they do, like you said, I hope that they 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 do a destiny on us. They start yeah, do to a make turn. Us, yeah, do a turn. Make us like them. Right. But anyway, like we said, thank you all for always coming yes, through. Yes, indeed. What new show we might be doing, we don't know. Yeah. But we, put we, your we, notifications we, on. Yep. So we saw this Kings of Napa, so we're going to continue to look at that. Look like it's going to be pretty good. Like it's going to be pretty good. But uh, we will let y'all know straight from the VA. Two up. Two down. Holla. Ooh.